All right, well, welcome to Shroud Teaching Raid. Um, like I said, we're going to go over uh, how each of the five parts of Shroud work. There are five different parts to this raid. And I'll just explain each part as we get to them. So, uh, hi, Lords, thank you for coming and helping out with this event. Uh, please do not go ahead to the next part once we get to the end of each part, because I do want to take a minute to explain it. Um, in this first part, which is incidentally modeled after the old Atari game Gauntlet, uh, what we're going to do is once the portal opens, and once this portal opens, by the way, it's open for five minutes, allowing latecomers to join up to five minutes late, but after that, the portal will close, and then nobody entering the raid after that will be able to get in. Um, so we're going to kill some trash, and the little quest box in the upper corner is going to let us know how many pieces of trash are left to kill, and then the portals will start spawning. And we're going to have to beat those portals down, and so you want to use, like, Construct Bane or Smiting Weapons against those portals. And also, if you're a caster, then, like, Ruin and Disintegrate and Magic Missile and four spells. I think negative energy will work too. And these days, because everybody's way, way over level, uh, it, you, that this part usually goes pretty quick. But um, for what it's worth, if you happen to get in, you know, like a short man pug or something, and things aren't going very quickly, what can happen if it takes a long time is these portal keepers can spawn from the portals. And if those portal keepers are out in the instance for I don't know if it's like one or two minutes, I don't know the exact amount of time, but it will actually cause the raid to fail right then and there. So there will be a DM announcement saying a portal keeper has entered the shroud, destroy him quickly. And so if you hear that, you know, you want to figure out where he is, he's going to be at one of the active portals and you need to kill him, otherwise the raid can fail. Other than that, we're just going to go from portal to portal and uh, beating them down. Mobs will spawn from them uh, as we're beating them down. And, you know, the order that we do is just something, you know, the, on Sarlona server, most people do it in, in this particular order. I hear that other servers do them in different orders, so that's just something you learn with experience. So just basically just stay with the party and beat on portals and kill trash for this first part. Any questions? Okay, cool. Let's do it. So here's we're just going to all spread out and kill trash. It says one left, now uh, all the trash is dead, so now the first portal is right in the center of the zone. Just look for all the dots. And then the next one, you can go up to this ramp to the left, or you can jump up on uh, where the spikes are. You will take some damage from those spikes, though. And there's going to be about a dozen of these portals to beat down before we get to the next part. Each part of the shroud, incidentally, was modeled after a classic video game, although I'm not really quite sure what part 5 might be like.
potentially Yara's Revenge. Light damaging spells and effects hurt the portals as well. Did I miss anything, guys, in terms of how to damage the portal? The portals. You know those weapons you drop in the first part? They're outdated. They're not even worth picking up anymore, are they? The ones you drop in the center. I was reading on Wiki that they dropped for the first. Yeah, those are those four weapons, which that's there's another clue as to how this is modeled after the after Gauntlet, but they they are old school and not so much worth picking up anymore. But it's like a Red Warrior Corpse, you know, Golden Wizard Corpse or whatever, Yellow Wizard Corpse, Blue Valkyrie, Green Elf Corpse. Those are all the characters from Gauntlet. And they do carry. They do have weapons there in those piles that can be used in the shroud, but will drop on exit. I always wanted them to make a way to, like, you know, use a cleansing stone on them to, you know, to get out, to get them out of the shroud or something like that. But they're just not even that great anymore. They, but they used to be fantastic. When I was a noob, uh, somebody pulled a gag on me. Some guy just kind of knew. It's actually Sing, and uh, he's like, here, do you want this staff? And I thought he was giving me, like, this uber staff. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sure, thanks so much, man. And then after we got out of the shroud, he's like, hey, man, could you link that staff that I gave you? And I was looking for it in my inventory, and I couldn't find it, and I thought I lost it. I felt so bad. It was a pretty good gag. So the next part of the shroud is actually modeled after Pac-Man. And so we're going to appear in a maze, and you're going to appear in a random corner of the maze. And what you want to do is make your way all the way south, straight south. Don't go towards the min middle of the maze. Go straight south and then over to the south central portion, which is where the entire party will meet. The reason why you don't want to go into the center of this zone is because it's where the four uh, mini bosses are. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically drag all trash to South Central, kill all the trash, and then we're going to go up and get the four mini bosses and pull them down. Now here's the caveat with this part. All those bosses have to be prepped and then killed at the same time. And they won't die unless they're separated. So if they're all grouped together, they're never going to die. So we're going to prep them while they're together and then split them up and you know you can use intimidate or whatever to pull them apart and once they start once they all die there's a crystal in the center of the maze that has to be destroyed and that crystal has to be destroyed before the well when the bosses die they turn to ghosts kinda like in Pac-Man when you eat the ghosts they turn to eyes they go back to the center to regenerate same thing here they're gonna turn to ghosts go back to the center to regenerate so you have to destroy that crystal before anyone gets back to regenerate and if they get back to regenerate then you gotta do the same thing again and then bring them all down and uh, and kill them all uh, right around the same time now uh, one thing is that if you don't destroy them all the first time and they've gone back to regenerate they no longer have to be separated to kill so it makes it a little bit easier if you have to try a, a second time and the crystal in the center usually a caster goes on there and just blasts it there's a shield around it before it is um, 
before it is vulnerable, but once all four of the, of the mini bosses are dead, that shield goes away and there's a window of opportunity to hit it. Just one person is fine, or like an archer can do that as well. Any questions about the next part? Alright, let's do it. Remember, go s due south first. Do not go towards the center of the maze. Go straight south. And then once you get all the way south, you're going to go to the center portion in the south. So right here. You don't want to go here because that's where the bosses are. And I'm going to pull those so you can see. I'm going to pull the bosses for purposes of the video, so please nobody else go to center. All trash is dead. I'm going to go get the mini bosses. Oh, it still has some trash up here by the crystal, but that's okay. So there's the crystal there. You just want to have after after these uh, mini bosses are taken down, you're going to have your caster or whoever just come up here and camp at the crystal and, and wait for it to be for the shield to come down. For what it's worth, some of the bosses move a lot faster than others, and so you know when you're when you get to that point where you're killing them, if if you have like the fire elemental or the cat, they move really quickly. And so you don't want to kill them first. But the four bosses that you get are somewhat random. For each boss, there's a, a possibility of two different bosses that could be there. So you get like the fire elemental or the earth elemental. You get, uh, I think it's the orthon or the bearded devil, uh, and so on. I forget exactly which two swap out for each other, but. The point is that there are different bosses that can be here to fight. The Orthon moves painstakingly slow, so he can almost be killed at any time. I mean, he just hobbles along uber slowly. Ani, thanks for getting the crystal. And I think I just intimidated all of them. Split them up. Nice work. So there is some debate over what classic video game the next part of Shroud is modeled after. Some have uh, suspected that it's Frogger. I actually think that it's closer to uh, a slightly more obscure video game called Blueprint. But that's another discussion. So what's going to happen is, when we go to the next part, you're going to appear in a random puzzle room. It's a floor, not a floor tile puzzle, but um, like like floor lights. And the object is to light up all the lights to complete the puzzle. And every time you stand on a light, every light around it will toggle. And it's they're all on or off. And... Um, once you toggle them all on, the barrier will come down to let you out of the room that you're in. Once you finish that puzzle and you get out of your room, you're going to go to the south central portion of the zone, and there's a fountain there. 
you want to click on the head of the fountain and that will give you a vial of lunar dew or a vial of lunar water. And then you're going to take those vials and take them back to the completed puzzle rooms and touch the fountain heads there and that'll get the water flowing in each of the puzzle rooms and we need to do that for all of them to complete uh, this part. So uh, what you don't want to do here is you don't want to destroy the crystals above your door which will let you out but make it so that the puzzle is incompletable uh, and you also don't want to you don't want to have summons in here because especially ones that can teleport or range because they'll destroy those crystals and you also don't want to put in any water into your fountain the puzzle room fountains until that puzzle is done now technically speaking you just can't put the last one in before the last puzzle is done but generally speaking you should just wait till any puzzle is done to put it in that particular fountain and the reason why is because if you put in the last water before the last puzzle is done then there are these two bonus chests underwater in the main fountain room that will be inaccessible if you need help with your puzzle just call it out um, if you have like knock or uh, lock picking ability you can let yourself out of the room without completing the puzzle but please do not break the crystals above your door again that would let you out but it would make it so that puzzle is not completable so that would be an emergency type scenario things are going wrong it's an emergency then you could break the crystal to get into a room If you're the first one to the south central portion, then you're going to have to break the crystals above the main room to let yourself into the fountain room, but it's open now. You click on the main fountain head, and you can carry one vial of lunar water, and you're going to run back out to the puzzle rooms and put them in the fountain heads once that puzzle is completed. You want to watch out for the blades that are zooming around. You also don't want to walk on the uh, runes because they do like an AOE. Uh, I think it's a horrid wilting. And there's also I think an insta-death trap effect as well. And if you're with a really bad group, <laughs> or any one of our Sunday shrouds, uh, it, this part takes about five minutes or more, then what's going to happen is this prismatic wall is going to appear, and it's going to start sweeping around the entire zone, just rotating around. And anybody who uh, gets close to that or touches it will die instantly, no save. And it just makes it more difficult to... <laughs> to get the job done. So when you solo this ginger, do you beat that cube? Do you have enough time to beat it with your passes? Well, you can, when I soloed it on, on normal, just the first time I did it all legit, uh, just because I, I wanted the challenge, but when I did it on hard and elite, no, I just broke the crystals just to get it done. All right, Darby needs some help in his puzzle. I think someone's in there. Okay, cool. And if you're going to do Shroud much, there are helpers for solving the puzzles. CubicleNinja.com has a great puzzle solver. That would have been a good addition yeah, to this video. That would have been a good addition to this video. Now you can go to the fountain room in the center. There are two chests underwater.
Also, for what it's worth, you can use the water to get your mana back. You can jump in and out of it, and it gives you life and mana. But th there's shrine anyways, but just letting you know. There's also a sweet spot down below in the corner that you can kind of swim into and get tons of mana really fast. See the mana bar there? You can't see the numbers, but you can see I'm getting mana pretty quickly here. It's not really much of a use to do that these days, but... A little tip from your Uncle Larry. Okay, next up is part four, which is clearly modeled after the uh, classic video game Star Castle. And in this part, we're going to zone in. There's going to be some trash to kill. And after some of the trash is killed, blades will spawn. And they can be like heat-seeking blades. If you killed that mob, they're going to follow you around for like 15, 20 seconds. It's pretty irritating. So the bottom line is if you have blades following you, don't just stand still and let them chew you up. Just kite them around for until they disappear. They won't last too long. After we kill two waves of trash, the boss, Eritrikos, affectionately known as Harry by most people, who is a red pit fiend, he will spawn in the center, and he will stay in the center for the entire part. He doesn't move, so the melees will collapse on him and just start beating on him. And then, um, usually, like, healers just put mass heals on usually the person with the most hit points in that group. And then range tunes and casters will be hanging around around out the uh, around the outside casting on him. Uh, one of the things you got to look out for is that there's going to be uh, a whole long line of blades, like 10 or 15 of them, that are going to slowly encircle the boss. And they won't be there right away after the boss is in the zone for maybe about 15, 20 seconds. Then those blades will appear, and they start slowly encircling him, and they get closer and closer and closer to the center. And so once the blades get to the center and really it depends on the leader of the group or the healers of the group you have to make a decision whether or not the melees will stay in and the healers if they're good healers can heal through that or if you know some people just prefer to have everybody come out if the party has really really good dps you can beat down harry and kill him before the blades even get close to the party if uh, the blades close in on the party maybe about 10 seconds later uh, the boss will disappear and then he'll fly above us and try to hit us with uh, comet falls or meteor swarms there'll be another rounds of trash and then the boss will come back and we'll just beat on him some more until he's dead for every successive round there are these null healers that come out and they shoot them with like these green healing rays so you want to kill those guys quickly and usually the casters will take them out Yes, good point, Ziffin. If you die here, you cannot be raised until the end of this part. And what I'd really like to do, and Ani, I know you're going to want to do this, because I just know you, buddy. I'd really like one person to die, so that for the video, we can demonstrate how to raise somebody. So, Ani, do you think you could die for us? So, Eritrikos is immune to fire. I think he'll take just about any other kind of damage type. What is his DR, by the way, for weapons? Since I never play melees, I don't know these things. Silver? Is it silver and good? Okay, cool, thank you. I don't think Ani's going to be able to get himself killed before... I know, Ani, you need to try harder, buddy. I mean, this may be your biggest challenge yet. Well, let's see if you can do it. It would be really, really funny if Ani couldn't die if he tried to.
Oh, he's at 500. You can do it, Ani. I actually threw him a heal earlier by mistake. I, I instinctively want to heal people when I see their bars getting low. Just stay in for the blades, folks. Good job, Ani. I am so proud of you, buddy. That was the most work you've done in a long time, isn't it, Ani? Ani is our guild piker. Well, let's say that's the most productive he's been in a long time. He likes to joke about <laughs> being the guild piker, but he's actually a really awesome player and a really nice guy. Don't tell him I said that, though. Hopefully he won't watch this. So we're going to have another round of trash here. And then Harry's going to come back, and we're going to finish beating him down. I'm really glad we went to the second round here so that the video can show uh, what happens now. And here he comes. Casters, work on the knolls, please. Nice work, folks. Alright, somebody get ready to hit the altar on my command, please. The dead people will appear in the south of this uh, zone for just a few seconds as soon as the altar is hit. And don't go into the next part, please. Uh, and there's, so there's a window of opportunity of about six, seven, eight seconds that you can actually hit them with a raise spell. Go ahead and okay, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, go ahead and hit the altar. Thank you, Ani, for being our sacrificial lamb. And if you're really quick there, you can actually raise multiple people. Probably not off of scrolls, but if you had like a, a you know, like a resurrection regular spell and a scroll or two different spells, then you could probably pull it off. You might be able to get two scrolls off if you're quick. So this is the part, if you're new to the raid, where people like to play a little gag on you. We're not going to do that because this is supposed to be a friendly community teaching raid. Um, but what uh, people like to do is tell the noob to stand on this altar and they'll say, you know, look at the white dot in the center of the <laughs> of the portal, and you got to jump at the white dot and click right in the middle, and then if you do that, we'll get an extra chest. And then they'll be like, but don't screw up. So then the new, you know, the, then you give the noob a jump and a haste and everything to make them think it's legit, and then when they click the portal, everybody dies, and then they feel bad and start crying, and it's a whole big thing. And but actually, everybody is supposed to die at that point, and there are no extra chests. But it's a good time to be had by all. It's just sort of a hazing ritual you do for, for new players. It happened to me when I was a noob, and I totally fell for it. In the next part, uh, we're going to fight the f same four mini-bosses that we did in part two, and they do have to be separated in order for them to die. So some noobish groups, you're going to see them like, trying to beat them all down forever when they're together, and, and <laughs> people are like, why won't they die? <laughs> they're at like negative 20,000 hit points. They do have to be separated to die, 
and then once they die, they then the boss, Eratricos, will appear again, and then we're just going to beat him down again. The difference between this part and last part is that he does now move around. He's going to chase you all around and stuff. <clears throat> so, how do you solo so, when you're, or how do you do them when you're solo? You just go toe to toe with them. No, but you have to split them up, right? How do you get them far enough apart? Oh, the way that you do it is by, um, like, you can take them all to, to a corner and then, like, run to the opposite corner. And since they all run at different speeds, if, as long, and you have, like, one of them dotted up. And so as soon as that one gets far enough away from the rest of them, he'll die. It's a little tricky, but it can be done. I have a video of me doing it posted, so if you want to watch that far, go for it, dude. It's tricky in part two as well, because you're dealing with the same issue. Any questions for the next part? Before we go, this will be the final part. Gents, you can go ahead and hit the portal. You can do the honors. So now we get to hear Harry talk about being tricked and how he should be on Shavaroth and stuff. And usually people will stay together for a few seconds. We'll come back alive here as soon as he's done talking. Stay together for a few seconds so that we can uh, put some buffs down. Incidentally, Death Ward or Death Lock is important if you have Caskwick the Kobold because he does use a Vorpal Blade, which is kind of funny. If he Vorpals you, it says uh, in the combat log, it says something like Snickety Snack with the Vorpal Blade, and that's a reference to the, the poem Jab Jabberwocky. Also, for what it's worth, you can get your mana back from the pools that are in the front of the zone or in the back of the zone. The pools in the back of the zone will disappear as soon as Harry uh, spawns, and the pools in the front of the zone will last for a little while after Harry spawns. There he is. And here, the only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have him behind the altar, because then the altar blocks healing spells. So anywhere on this side of the altar is fine. He will do, I don't know if it's poison damage or some sort of con draining effect, but he can make you helpless. So a mass heal is great to take care of that. If not, make sure you have remove or neutralize poison pots or some way to remove ability point damage. And even though they haven't taken damage, I'm still throwing mass heals just because in case they've taken any stat damage, that will take care of them. And there is one more thing I want to show you after the boss dies.
and one, if the boss is out for a while, blades start to spawn, and a bunch of them will be out, and it can start to get a little messy. But now that everybody's like level 28, it's usually not a big deal. But sometimes you get in some pugs, you know, and you know, they're sh they're short-handed or they just don't have the DPS. Sometimes things can still get a little hairy. I I was in one like that recently. Okay, uh, so for those of you of you that are new to Shroud. Just want to show you there are two portals on each side of the zone. If you examine them, it'll say like portal of the waxing moons, portal of the full moons, etc. And there are two more on the other side. Those will take you back to the previous four parts of the shroud if you need to go back there because you forgot to loot a chest or somebody left something in a chest for you or you want to use the crafting devices or something. There are crafting devices in part 1, 3, and 5 of the shroud. Then you can use those portals to get back there. And that is all. Thanks for coming to our inaugural 2015 teaching raid. Uh, my plan is to host these hopefully every Saturday for at least the next couple of months, and we're just going to cycle through all the different uh, raids. And there's going to be information about the events on the Sarlona forums. For the people that were new to Shroud, do you guys have any questions before we break? I did. I did, Zach. I did it without hitting the push to talk, though. So you didn't hear me. Did it for the video. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I did. Darby and Gins, do you have any questions before we break? Yeah, thanks for coming, man. And then uh, one thing is that every 20th completion of Shroud, you're going to get what's called a cleansing stone or an essence of cleansing. And you can use that to take the taint of Shavaroth off of your green steel equipment. You probably don't have any green steel equipment yet. But aside from the weapons, you can only wear one green steel item at a time because it has this thing called taint of Shavaroth. And if you're wearing more than one that has that taint of Shavaroth, then you just sit there and take constant damage, but you can use that cleansing stone that you get from a 20th completion list to remove that taint of Shavarath, allowing you to wear multiple green steel items. Thanks again for coming. Hi Lords, thanks for supporting the event. You guys have a good one.